Look at that story act at the top. Woman dead on the freeway ramp. Look at that son, man. Jesus. Deputies say Christ. before Mays was arrested, he led them on a high-speed chase. The morning of February 23rd, deputies found 32-year-old Jennifer DiMatteo lying dead on I-43. Investigators say her body was surrounded by... Jennifer DiMatteo, that's an of Italian course. name. Right, of course. I-43. Investigators say her body was surrounded by debris from a blue Volkswagen. It was determined DiMatteo was hit by a car and killed. Just hours before the discovery, investigators say deputies got a call from 23-year-old Forrest Mays. Mays told them he was hit by a car while driving near 5th and Lapham. <laughs> he tried to lie and say that. He tried to get ahead of it. <laughs> Salute to um, Deluxe247, a.k.a. Cal Ripken, a.k.a. The Real MVP. Shout out to my man, Doug Chunks, man. Um showing up once again man we about to go members only man members only for the for the stream man for that, until until we get out of here man shout out to um all my members man um shout out to all the members out here man if you're not a member sorry man um you gotta be a member man to to enjoy the rest of the stream we about to go in man uh Let's see, man. Um, Milwaukee. Some men ain't good at planning ahead. Yeah, Milwaukee, in 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 in, in honor of our, our buddy um, Santos, man, we're going to do Milwaukee, man, Racine, with Kenosha, Wisconsin area. Say, before Mays was arrested, he led them on a high-speed chase. The morning of February 23rd, deputies found 32-year-old Jennifer DiMatteo lying dead on I-43. Investigators say her body was surrounded by debris from a blue Volkswagen. It was determined DiMatteo was hit by a car and killed. Just hours before the discovery, investigators say deputies got a call from 23-year-old Forrest Mays. Mays told them he was hit by a car while driving near 5th and Lapham, and the crash left behind debris. That call would eventually be detailed on a criminal complaint, charging Mays in connection to the hit and run. According to the complaint, deputies were able to track down the Volkswagen that hit DiMatteo and connect it to Mays. The complaint says it was a rental car. Fast forward to March 8th, deputies spotted Mays, who at this point was a suspect in the hit and run. Mays was leaving Timber Ridge Apartments in Oak Creek, and officers followed him with their lights on. Mays sped away. Request MPD, please. We believe the suspect is in the wanted for vehicular homicide. Investigators say Mays was running red lights and driving into oncoming traffic, where he eventually hit a car. After nearly 17 miles in speeds reaching 98 miles an hour, the chase came to an end. Deputies took Mays into custody, and he is now facing a total of seven counts in both of these cases. And court records do show Mays is being held in the Milwaukee County Jail on cash bonds, totaling to 100000 Guys, Stephanie, thank you. A cross-country trek for a young woman turned tragic along I-43 in Milwaukee. There she is. <laughs> God damn. Fucking this woman, tragedy. I know, she's just dead. She's dead. cross-country trek for a young woman turned tragic along I-43 in Milwaukee, February 23rd. She wanted to get away from drugs and get her life right, so she left the country. She left North Carolina, just go wherever she wanted to go. A driver spotted the body of 32-year-old Jennifer DiMatteo underneath the Greenfield Avenue overpass and called 911. Deputies noticed vehicle parts located around the body of the victim stamped with Volkswagen. Her cousin, Amanda Lund, is outraged. I don't see how someone could do that to a person, hit them and leave them there to die. For weeks, DiMatteo's death remained a mystery. Investigators say they obtained video from county buses to determine DiMatteo was struck between 1.47 and 2.02 a.m. They also say they obtained video from a BP gas station on Lapham shortly after, showing a person appear to inspect damage on the passenger side of a blue Volkswagen. 
Friday, prosecutors charged 23-year-old Forrest Mays with hit and run causing death. According to a criminal complaint, Mays had called authorities at 2.49 in the morning on February 23rd to report a black Hyundai hit his rented blue Volkswagen along I-43 and drove off. Investigators say they followed up with the rental company who told them the car had been returned with damage and was in the repair shop. The complaint says detectives noticed, quote, the Volkswagen appeared to have pieces of fabric in the impact area that were consistent with the clothing the victim was wearing. <laughs> Yo, he didn't even clean out the fabric, man. Wow. Damn, son, man. The only reason he did that report is because it was a rental. If it wasn't a rental, he would have never called the police. You know that. Right. Uh, may I tell a story? Quickly. Yeah, um, there was a guy last year. His name was Jose. He was a veteran. He's 50 years old. They went to Milwaukee to get some cameras for security for their house. He went in. He was there less than two minutes just to pick it up. He went back outside in his truck. He saw he left his son in there who was only 10. Uh, a young gentleman, this is near a storage auction or storage house and a middle school. This guy had the same colors as the, the school. And he knows, okay, why is this guy facing my son who's locked in the car scared? He had a gun. He was no much, no much older than 13 years old, he thinks. And he would put two and two together. He says, okay, this guy is from the school. He robbed and stole the car because he had a, a loaded gun, pointed at their heads. And then just took it away. It was like a fifteen thousand uh, dollar blue truck. And the city of Milwaukee, when he got to the police station, he says, "Hey, this you know connection with the middle school." And they just brew him off like, "No, we're not going to pursue that." And look in the the records for the school. It could just be some random kid. And even asked the people who were in the camera store who was security, they wouldn't even want to participate with them too. And I said, "You're kidding me! You got your car stolen in Milwaukee." for 15, less than 10 minutes, not even, um, to go pick up security for your uh, like home security cameras. And they don't even have a quality camera outside and they're not going to help you out. And I thought those are just so crazy. And then I yeah, thought about this. Th listen, a 13-year-old son teen, that's prime crime age. That's not like what you would think is like a kid. That's, the, that's not a kid. That's somebody that'll blow your fucking brains up. Police arrested Mays after a high-speed chase March 8th. When a sergeant told Mays he was being held for DiMatteo's death, they say Mays replied, quote, This ain't no intentional homicide, Sarge. It's three or four in the morning. Sarge, how the expletive am I supposed to know what I hit at three or four in the morning? I heard that if this is the man, I hope justice is served, and I hope he does his time in jail. Five years you know, that, Like I said, that's just... He'll do five years. Vehicular manslaughter doesn't carry a lot of time. I think he'll do five years, Tops. I think, I think you're wrong. I, I think they're going to throw him under the jail. How so? What, 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 vehicular manslaughter is, 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 a, is not like murder. Well, no. no. I, just, I just think off of the strength that he killed the glider queen. Oh, yeah, yeah, jail. they're going to hang him. Yeah, they're probably going to hang him, yeah. If he's not dead already. That any human being can do to somebody. Erica Finke joining us live from the newsroom tonight. Erica, detectives say Mays was not even supposed to be driving that night. No, he was out on bail charged in a previous case in October with <laughs> fleeing. <laughs> he was out on bail. Yo. How surprising. Jeez. There's a, a heavy correlation between being out on bail and committing crime. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like uncanny. every night we hear the same shit. All the guys that commit the crime are out on bail. Erica Finke joining us live from the newsroom tonight. Erica, detectives say Mays was not even supposed to be driving that night. No, he was out on bail charged in a previous case in October with fleeing police. He posted $1,000 cash with condition that he not drive until his case was resolved in May. Hey, son, man, promise us you won't. <laughs> Promise us. 
Now at five, a woman seriously hurt in a hit and run on Water Street. Tonight, her family looking for justice. The Trump obtained surveillance video showing a car crash into a wooden barricade. It happened Sunday night. This is a different woman. This is a different woman in Milwaukee. God damn. damn. Now at five, a woman seriously hurt in a hit and run on Water Street tonight. Her family looking for justice. The Trump News obtained surveillance video showing a car crash into a wooden barricade. It happened Sunday night during the busy St. Patrick's Day celebrations just before 11 o'clock near Water and Highland. 12 News Kendall Keyes is there live tonight. And Kendall, the driver shouldn't have been on that stretch of Water Street that night. Patrick, it was blocked off by wooden barricades similar to the broken one we can see laying in the median there. Those were designed to keep cars off of this portion of Water Street packed with people celebrating St. Patrick's Day. 28-year-old Sierra Pecor's mom tells me she was crossing Water Street over to Elwoods when a car hit her and kept going. Nobody was supposed to go down that street and just out of the blue, he came and hit her. Surveillance video from Water Street Sunday night captures the moments a car speeds through the intersection of Water and Highland and crashes into a wooden barricade. Two people jump up on the curb to get out of the way. 28-year-old Sierra Pecor couldn't move fast enough. I'm just glad she's alive. Steph Pecor speaking Smash with 12 News outside of Radiant Hospital in between surgeries for her daughter, Sierra. She has rods and plates in this leg, rods and plates in this one. Her knee was dislocated they had to do vascular surgery to fix her foot so she wouldn't lose her foot picor says sierra was out with friends celebrating saint patrick's day the date also marking a somber milestone for the family her brother was the same age as her when he passed and they were going to the last bar to have a shot at midnight to wish him a happy Emily's birthday um, four years ago sierra's brother evan passed away she never made it to Elwoods to toast to Evan with their cousin Nick. Nick said it was so fast he didn't he couldn't even see. And then he realized he seen Sierra fly and she spun and her shoes fell off. The car plowed through the barricade, there to keep pedestrians like Sierra safe. Your daughter, does she remember what happened? Yes, because she told my nephew Nick. She said, Nick, why was he going so fast? Kendall, you just talked about those surgeries. How is she doing tonight? She's in critical condition and has been in and out of surgeries since Sunday. I asked Milwaukee police if they could confirm that car in the surveillance video was the car that hit Sierra. They wouldn't answer that and just said they had investigative leads and don't need help from the public. They don't need help from the public. Wow. So they got their man. They just got to find them. You know, you know, a part of me actually feels guilty because my mind says son, man, right? I guess it could technically be anybody, that but let's safe. be honest. Yeah, let's... Uh, do you, do yeah. you remember that one son, man, I, a while ago now that had like a thousand speeding tickets? Yeah, I remember. It was in Milwaukee, yeah, was right? it. yeah, definitely. What it's going um, on over there? Here you go, man. Here you well, the go. Milwaukee man is charged, accused of brutally beating a man in the Walker's Point neighborhood last weekend. Happened Saturday night, right near 14th and National. Prosecutors say the victim was punched multiple times, and then his head was stomped on five times. The suspect, Jose Gonzalez, is charged with attempted homicide. According to the criminal complaint, the victim was attacked after he refused to move out of Gonzalez's way while on the sidewalk. Damn. I mean, we should string him up and beat him like a pinata, right? Why not? Shit. This area has now been cleared and the intersection is back open. Earlier, police had this area blocked off for about an hour or so as they investigated a fatal hit and run. 62 National, pedestrian struck by a vehicle. Barricades and police tape blocking off the area near 62nd and National as West Dallas police investigated a fatal hit and run. Investigators scoping the scene and taking photos. Can we get Greenfield shut down at 60th Street for westbound? Um, we're going to need to back off uh, the area of this whole thing. The crash happened around 2 Thursday afternoon. Police say a 63-year-old woman was crossing the street when a vehicle struck her. She died at a hospital. It's going to be a white Chevy Equinox elderly male driver. He's eastbound. Okay. 
Police say a witness followed the driver and told police where the car was. Police say that driver is a 91-year-old man and he has been arrested. Kristen, at this hour, do we know if there are any charges for that driver? Deanna, this crash is still in, under investigation. Police said when they're finished with this investigation, they'll pass it to the district attorney for a review of charges. And also the victim has not yet been identified. Hey, it's dangerous. That was what that was the theme of that video, though, um, Wicked, that you were talking about a minute ago, that how dangerous the streets of Milwaukee are for, for uh, pedestrians, man. And th that one was a while ago, too. And it's still going on? Wow. Yeah, it's 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 um wow they 